Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to join us in this edition of the news on Equinox Television. In this newscast, we talk about the 2012-2013 results of the ordinary and A-levels GCE that were released today amid reports of how candidates recorded a better performance compared to last year. And also, we talk upcoming twin elections in the country. The Supreme Court has ruled in favor of one political party, that is the UMS, out of the five petitions that were filed in against elections governing body Alekam and also elite one and two games resume across the country. That is going to be this weekend. These are headlines, details and more just in a moment. Good evening to you viewers once again and welcome to join us in this edition of the news on Equinox Television. We begin in politics. The administrative bench of the Supreme Court has called on Elecam to accept the nomination papers of the UMS party that were rejected or the, their papers in some free localities of the West region of Cameroon. The court rendered the verdict today after a hearing of some petitions submitted by five political parties that were vying for posts in the upcoming twin elections. Ayaundi based correspondent Roland Akong tells us in the following report that the petitions that were filed in by the CPDM, the SDF, and the UPC political parties were simply rejected. His report. Pierre Cuemo wins case against Elecam, the elections management body. The president of the UMS party will run for council elections in three localities in the West region where Elecam rejected nomination papers of his party. Elecam branch officials argued Cuemo did not submit complete papers of his party in time. With evidence, Cuemo's lawyer challenged Elecam, proving that the UMS party submitted its nomination papers on time, causing the administrative bench of the Supreme Court to rule in favor of the UMS party. The verdict puts to question the impartiality and neutrality of elections Cameroon. Our institution is independent. And um, there is no reason why we should accept all files concerning all other political actors, all political parties all over the country, and we shall refuse to accept the files of one political party in three council areas. Cuemo's victory against Elecam is also hope for other parties with arguments against Elecam. The advent of our computers receipts are still in handwritten. Earlier, the administrative bench of the Supreme Court rejected petitions of some CPDM, SDF, and UPC candidates whose files were rejected for the council elections. The SDF and UPC candidates submitted incomplete documents to the surprise of the presiding judge, Justice Muma. When we were establishing this law, they knew about the, the geographical difficulties of this country, and that is why probably they took into consideration the 15 days, two weeks, and one day is enough time to establish any document I need to have. That is not possible. The That's CPDM party yeah, candidates in the South CPDM. were challenging the non-respect of the sociological component and gender in the list submitted by the party for the council elections. That is not the only reaction we had from political parties or some political uh, party officials in Yaoundé Centre region of Cameroon today. The chairman of the Cameroon Democratic Party, that is Benz Eno, is calling for the total cancellation of the municipal elections due to the non-respect, that is how he described it, of some provisions of the electoral code. He spoke to Yaoundé based correspondent Roland Akong. Let's listen to what he had to say. Certain provisions of uh, the law made it possible that the head of state is supposed to come out with a decree to identify the number of councillors in each council area. And uh, this is to guide political parties and also every team which is uh, interested in investing for the party to know exactly how many councillors they will need within a particular council area. And when I read my electoral code, I see that uh, that provision of the law ha was not considered. It was considered in the legislative elections, but was not considered in that of uh, 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 municipal. And so uh, some of our colleagues have deemed it necessary to pay. 
That is the president of the CDP political party, Benz and others. Speaking to the base correspondent, Roland Akong, he wants the total cancellation of the municipal elections bill for the 30th of September 2013. Meantime, election board members have barely one day to publish the list of candidates to go in for the municipal and the legislative elections. They have been meeting in Yaoundé to scrutinize the files of nominated candidates for the upcoming twin elections. And the politicians or politicians across the country are impatiently waiting for the publication list that is going to be tomorrow, latest midnight. Meantime, the results of the 2012-2013 ordinary and advanced levels of the GCE have been released. Official statistics from the register of the GCE board indicates uh, that there was a mass improvement in this year's performance compared to the previous year. For the pass in percentage, the ordinary level has recorded a 45% pass and 55.97% uh, for the advanced level, 45.25% or two five rather for the technical ordinary levels and 55.90% uh, for technical A level and the results for TAS uh, that is in Quen have been withheld over irregularities pending investigations. Since we are talking academics, we will remain uh, with the case opposing some students of the University of Boya and the UB administration that continued at the Boya Court of Friends instance today in Boya Southwest region who were charged. Uh, just to note that the Boya Court of Friends instance has charged the ADEC official, that is Nafak Alex, with spreading rumor uh, for spreading false rumors of the alleged death in prison of one of certain Ngu Lawrence. It was, or oh, he was before judges today of the Boya Court of First Instance as well as some other University of Boya students arrested that was during the February 6th strike action on the Monaco campus. Hearing on both cases would only resume on the 7th of August 2013 for the UB students and also on the 14th of August the case against Nanfak Alex would, would resume at the Boya Court of First Instance. Just to know that the students are being charged for the destruction of property on the campus of the University of Boya and for taking the VC of the said institution, Professor Nalova Lyonga, hostage. Meantime, one person has sustained severe injuries with enormous material damage recorded in a road accident that occurred last night around Karifu Terminus, that is Baby Aero Dwala in the economic capital. A heavy duty truck transporting a container is reported to have lost control after of routing an electric pole. The vehicle bumped into a warehouse. Fortunately enough, no human life was endangered. Drivers and pedestrians in Melong town have decried the bad route or the bad states of routes at the Melong Park. The drivers are saying that they have to relocate in search of passengers who prefer to stand by the roadside waiting for taxis. And they have called on local authorities to seek solu a solution to the ongoing phenomenon. For Hansen Chanji tells us more in the following report. At the motor park in Melong, drivers, passengers and pedestrians are finding things difficult to go about their various activities because of the poor state of the roads. The road in Melon is bad. Drivers, pedestrians have to cope with the poor state of road. At the bus stop in Melon, passengers find it difficult to come here. That is why they stand elsewhere. At the heart of the rainy season here, passengers don't go around looking for taxis. Instead, taxis go in search of passengers. As we see, the place is not accessible. We cannot enter into a vehicle. Passengers cannot come in, so we have decided to relocate. We are not striking. We are just relocating from where we used to be. It is difficult for passengers to come there. The drivers revealed that council authorities had promised that something would be done, but have not honored their promise. Two months after the road, means the same. To the population, they have been abandoned to lick their own wounds. <laughs> In Melon, dead and littered everywhere. No sanitary company to take care of the dead. The roads in Melon, especially during this rainy season, is terrible. When they should get worse, vehicles are abandoned. Pedestrians have no choice than to move into the mud. 
Meantime, about one month to the next academic year, youths across the country are fully engaged in several activities. A majority told our correspondents that is precisely in Yaoundé that it is in a bid to help assist their parents or assist their parents to prepare for the next academic year. Roland Akong tells us more from Yaoundé. I'm called Lima Andre Donal. I'm called Lima Andre Donal. I'm attending the Yaoundé Administrative Centre Primary School. I'm pushing the wheelbarrow to prepare my back to school. With their wheelbarrows, these school children are doing their holiday job in the Mvongbi market. Chindo is a Form 3 student going to Form 4. He tells me the job will defray his school allowance when classes resume September. The children told me that they earn at least 1,000 francs a day and help their parents provide for their school needs when schools resume in September. Their services is of great help to buyers. This lady tells me the wheelbarrow children are very necessary as they help carry their goods in the market. Buyers pay at least 200 francs, sometimes 300. Depending on the time they spend in the market with the wheelbarrow children. The Vogby market where traders are still counting their losses after scores over a hundred of shops were consumed into or to ashes uh, in a fire incident that occurred early yesterday. Meantime, uh, Cameroonian women have joined their African counterparts to celebrate the day for the African woman. It was instituted by the African Union 51 years ago, and it has been celebrated this year under the theme African Renaissance, the role of the Pan-African Women's Organization. Here in the economic capital, Douala, women turned out in their numbers to celebrate the day they showcased their african culture through traditional dances attire and even uh, speaking the native language on the occasion women were told to fight for their rights and not depend solely on women in the following interview the delegate the literal regional delegate for women empowerment and the family for the Douala 2 municipality mrs Ntamsani kalagui explains further the plights of the african woman the african woman has not yet uh, arrived the stage where she can be economically independent then we have also uh, the, the fact that we are not up to date as far as decisions are concerned. Some of the decisions that are applicable to us are being held by the men in general. In fact, this day today is not only we have to group to be together and think from 1963, let me just put that date, till today, what have we achieved? Now we have to look ahead. Where are we heading to? What are we going to do? Since we have, we have achieved little from the basis, now the agenda 2063, how are we going to go about it to achieve and to be at the same level, even more at a better level than our other uh, women like Europeans and Americans? But I insist, the woman, don't be selfish. Fight for your rights, but think about your motherlyhood, that love that you have. That has been always the model in the world. It was still on the sidelines of the African Women Day that some women activists here in the economic capital, Douala, also said that the African woman is contributing immensely in the development of Africa. In the excerpt which comes up next, the delegate or the regional delegate for social affairs for the littoral region, Mrs. Monsim von Messi, further tells us that women are getting more and more emancipated. Today, I can think that the African woman 
is an emancipated woman. She's no longer in the kitchen. She's no longer in the shadow of a man. So I want to believe that the African woman is moving ahead and contributing to the development of the African continent. The African woman is a very humble woman. She is very attached to her traditions and cultures. If you can see, I'm traditionally dressed. The African woman is still bound by some negative cultural practices that still relegate them to the background like female genital mutilation, widow who rights. We have several of those cultures that still relegate them to the background. So men still think that it is not possible for women to be in leadership positions. Uh, at 51, the African woman has attained a, a state of maturity. And I want to advocate that every African woman should affirm herself as an African woman and should integrate all other cultural practices that foster the development of the African woman. That is the uh, literal regional delegate of uh, social affairs uh, there speaking to student journalist on internship, Shea Morin, on the sidelines of the African Women Day that is being commemorated today. We talk sports football like we announced in the headlines. The 19th playing day of the Elite 1 and 2 games resume in Cameroon this weekend with the Elite 2 games built for Saturday and the Elite 1 to take place on Sunday. The announcement was made in an extraordinary meeting between the national club presidents and also the president and members of the FECA Foods Normalization Committee, the games had come to a standstill after club presidents contested the reinstatement of General Pierre Semenge and called for fresh elections into the National Football League and announced elective General Assembly earlier of a new league president that was to take place in August has simply been cancelled. Viewers, that does it for this segment of the news. Up next is Talking Point. Good evening to you once again, viewers. In course of this newscast, we saw women showcasing their traditional attires and also speaking the native language, their traditional, their cultural values. Uh, those who, uh, that was, uh, those activities uh, were on the sidelines of the African Women Day that is being commemorated today in Cameroon. Our guest tonight is a feminist, Miss. Uh, Yitambeng Jizo, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. We invited you here within the context of the African Women Day that is being commemorated today. And uh, just to find out from you as an African woman, what's the significance, how significant is this day to you as an individual? Uh, this day is very important because uh, it gives us opportunity to see how far we have gone what we have achieved and what is left to do. Because sometimes when you sp they speak about African women, they tend to talk mostly about the plagues, the setbacks, but there are many things that African women have accomplished which should be celebrated. Because, for example, I can take uh, African Union. Uh, in the African Union today, you have 50% uh, of female commissioners so this, uh, this organization has done what many organizations around the world have not been able to do. And when you think, for example, about a country like Rwanda, 51% of women, the, parliament, the parliamentarians are women. So we have several examples from this continent Those to show. Those are just some of the few achievements that African women have so far. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, some of the achievements of the African woman, mm -hmm. and you have cited the case of the EU and also a country like Rwanda. Yeah. That is, uh, those are some of the rare cases that we see in Africa. Generally, if you want to look at the role of the woman in the society and how she is represented in several other activities in politics that you earlier indicated, mm -hmm. what could be your evaluation or your assessment? Uh, the situation is still very, it's not as good as we should have expected. But there, as I'm saying, there are things through which has happened. In the continent, you have two head of state. And when we, we come back to, our, to the country as ours, uh, I'm seeing that uh, we, have, we are not yet there because uh, we have uh, agreed for several quotas, different to, 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 to reach several uh, quotas in certain positions. But till today, we are still uh, behind. So, are you talking about the case of Cameroon? I'm talking about the case of Cameroon. You so know? so yeah, what are some of the difficulties what's making the, uh, the woman in Cameroon, the African woman in Cameroon, uh, 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 what's stopping her from meeting some of her goals, like uh, some women that we see in Africa? 
Uh, I will say the, uh, the first thing is the political will. I think uh, if uh, the leaders really uh, put in place a strategy to get the women to the top, they will get them there. So I'm not sure the political will is, is there. And, uh, and the women themselves, because they have to get out of certain traditional uh, you know, type of jobs, certain traditional way of behaving, to go and find their ways where, uh, where the policy is, where the decision making is. To you, surely, or uh, probably the customs and uh, the political uh, situation in the country does not permit a woman maybe to attain her goals of maybe joining uh, politics or being involved in political happenings in the country? Yes, I, 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 the political, the traditions who put the women behind, the religion who uh, does not encourage the women to go out and set for, 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 for position outside of the domestic uh, arena. And then, as I'm saying, you know, uh, when you take our policy, they, they have in, in, very, in, a, in a lot of documents, they have talked of 30% of, of women taking the position, but when you verify, we have not yet reached the 30% quota. So you think uh, if nothing is done, how, how soon could women, would women be able to attain that level that you are talking about? Uh, women are getting organized. Like today, you have uh, when I was uh, following uh, when we follow what was said uh, by the delegate, women are getting organized, so they are mobilized uh, to to get their voice uh, heard. And uh, I'm taking this opportunity at the eve of a very important event, which is the the, the uh, parliamentarian and, uh, the municipal and and municipal election to see that. Uh, uh, Eleka make sure that the quota is respected. And that th that's uh, the minimum. the reason why some files were rejected because it didn't take gender into consideration. That's very good to hear. So now, just to find out from you, talking about the African woman, mm -hmm. uh, what makes her stand out in the society? What's what's the difference? For, what's the difference between an African woman from any other woman? I, I think you the, 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 there there are a lot of difference. And then there are similarities as well. You know, when you take the African women in, her, in the context of Africa, Africa has suffered a lot, uh, slavery, colonization. So her situation is different. And uh, war as well. And when there are all these kind of situations, the women bear the burden the, uh, in the society. Now, and uh, her culture, which is different, uh, some religions that we have here which are different, so that makes the difference between African women and the others. And uh, coming, for example, I, I, you, we have been hearing a lot around the world about uh, uh, the, the abortion of female uh, fetus. Uh, this is something that is happening a lot in Asia, but this in Africa you hardly hear of some, some, some terrible thing like this. But so, you see women give birth and they throw the baby like was, uh, abandon the baby like was uh, the case of uh, one baby that was retrieved from a pit toilet yesterday. That's just an aside. Yes, you know, that is the that's concept. That's an act that has been carried out by a woman and it has that been described is, by many as horrible. Yes, it is horrible and is, is the consequence of the globalization, is a consequence of poverty, is a consequence of a lack of communication in the family because I'm sure maybe it should, generally, it's surely a very young girl who does not want the family, you know, to be stigmatized because she has got a child without getting married, uh, who has not been able to discuss with the parents about uh, reproductive health and so on and so forth. So. There are many, it's horrible, but uh, that's not all the case all the time. It happens, that's true. But uh, the situation, the economic situation can justify it as well. 
When we look at the commemorative activities uh, concerning this African Women Day that uh, took place here in the economy capital Douala, we saw women in varied uh, uh, attires and also speaking different languages as we followed in uh, this in the course of this newscast. So can we also say that an African woman could be better identified through her attire or her outfit? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, she can be identified through her attire, she can be identified through her food, the way she's cooking, the way she's even thinking because we have our customs. But now with the globalization and TV, you see you, you can uh, all around the world, almost everybody is quite looking uh, the same, you know. But now when you go inside the culture and uh, the practices, you can differentiate. Can we say that the culture is gradually dying down as a result of globalization? I will say that, unfortunately, because uh, it should have been, instead of trying to harmonize or trying to get it, uh, to get all the culture look alike, uh, the world would have benefited by getting each one bringing what he has for the, for the humanity's sake because we have a lot of good things, as they have also, but there should not be only one voice. Is it the world that is the problem, or is it the Africans themselves that are unable to portray or exhibit their culture? I think it's the system that is the problem. It's the, and um, uh, this system, uh, which is globalizing, trying to harmonize it, or everything. Uh, and it, I, I'm not, I will say also the African who have not really find, find their ways to play their, their own game, to play their part in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the global game. But you know, m women are meeting, discussing about it. We are meeting around the world and uh, making, trying not only to make sure that uh, we get our voice heard, but also to make sure that the, the world is a better place where everyone can live in. You earlier talked about uh, that this day, it was, uh, it's always very focused with uh, that uh, the, 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 the center, or the focus at the center of deliberations, discussions everywhere, uh, the, some of the problems that the African woman faces. Like when uh, the African woman faces, mm -hmm. like when we are celebrating the International Women's Day, we keep talking about the problems of uh, the women. Mm -hmm. so, so now, what are some of these problems? You started by highlighting the, 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 the achievements of the African woman. Mm -hmm. What are really the problems of the African woman? Uh, there are many problems. When we take, for example, the women in economics, which is my sector, and special, specifically the women in agriculture, we know that the women are uh, the one producing the food that the whole, the world, the African continent is, is having. They, but the, how are they producing it? They are producing, they, they, can, they, they lack access to land, they lack access to, to credit, to, to finance, and they lack access to mechanization because they are producing all this out of their hands. So those are the kind of things, those are the problems, you know, because having all the Arab land that we have in the continent, and uh, if politically we were really willing to solve the pro problem of uh, food security, women should be given the mean, the education, to be able to uh, do what they are doing more professionally. And talking about the theme, let's just do a rundown of the theme before we go. The African Renaissance, the role of the Pan-African Women's Association. Do we see it? Uh, why the choice of this thing in the first place? Uh, I, I believe that uh, it was chosen because we, uh, as women, we, we would like to network more and come up with a sol solution for the continent. We would like to sit and discuss the issues of the continent and give and get our voice heard 
about what is uh, what is going on in the continent. 51 years after the day was instituted, do you see it uh, achieving some of its set goals, like uh, maybe creating awareness on the role of the African woman and asserting, creating, uh, making the role or the place, giving the place for the African woman in the society? Do you see these goals being achieved 51 years after it was instituted? Uh, the results are really not as we would have expected, but as I said, there are some good results and they are good coming ahead because we have two head of states today in Africa. Uh, we have the head of AU being a woman, and in this country as well, you know, women are forging ahead, but uh, there's still a long way to go. And we at ASAF Knowledge Academy, we have been preparing, organizing girls to think out of the box, to not to remain consumers, but to be producers, to be producers uh, of economic, uh, economic goods and to be producers of thinking as well. Madame Itamben Giselle, a feminist telling us about the role of the African woman. It is within the context of the African Women Day commemorated today in Cameroon and in the continent at last. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. Thank you, Mimi. And to you viewers, we thank you for having joined us for, or for having joined us in this edition of the news. We invite you to have a wonderful stay in the company of our programs. Good evening to you once again.